In this video, we're gonna try to be making some realistic clouds in the Blender. Let's get started. Right, so first off, we wanna add a basic human. And if you don't have this option to add in a basic human, you can go to Edit Preferences and here just search for Rigify. And uh, you just have to enable this add-on. It's a pretty good way to reference the scale and everything. Let's add in a plane, scale that up a little bit and then go to edit mode and just subdivide it a bunch so we got some more geometry to work with. Now you want to hit F3 on your keyboard and search for select random. This will bring up this little menu down here and here you can basically control the fall off of the selection. So this will just select some random faces here and then hit control plus on your keyboard to expand the selection. And whoops, I went one too far. It looks pretty good. Now hit Control I on your keyboard to invert the selection and then X to delete the faces. All right, so this will be our base that we're working with. And now what we want to do is start to shape these little islands into cloud shapes that we will then use for the smoke simulation. Basically what I did here is just uh, use the random selection once more. Yeah, something like that. Just expand that, and now we can start to actually extrude these uh, faces in uh, different directions. That looks pretty good. Let's keep doing this. Oh, and for the selection, just hit Alt E, and then you have some different options for your uh, extrusion, extruding. I like to use the extrude in individual faces, and we'll uh, remesh all of this later, so don't worry too much about the uh, uh, geometry. You can also use the uh, wireframe mode or the solid mode from top and just select some random parts like this and then uh, extrude those. All right, let's go ahead and give this a solidify modifier. And the reason for this is if I just disable this one and add the remesh modifier, we'll see we get these really weird artifacts here because the geometry is kind of messed up from our extruding. But if we add in the solidify first, it will kind of fix that. So yeah, use the solidify modifier, control A and hover our mouse over these um, modifiers to apply them. And this is looking pretty okay. Let's do some displacement on this. Let's just add in a displace modifier, hit new, and then hit this uh, button right here to go to the texture tab. And here we can do, uh, let's see, cloud texture and scale that up a little bit. Play around with these values here. Let's remesh that once more. But let's use a slightly smaller value here to get some more geometry. Let's apply that and go to sculpting mode. And uh, when you go to sculpting mode, you have to keep this object selected like this. And um, yeah, you just hit sculpting. I like to use this brush right here, the snake hook brush. Gives you a lot of control. You can just start shaping these a little bit, adding some random variation like this. Right, let's just go back to layout mode and here I'm going to show you a different method that's kind of cool. Uh, if you take a look at some of these clouds, you will see that you have these uh, fluffy cloud tops and then at the bottom it's kind of more displaced on the um, X and Y axis. So it's kind of like flattened out but uh, displaced, if that makes sense. So basically what we're going to do in edit mode, we're going to select the bottom parts of this cloud shape like so. We're gonna go to the data tab and we're gonna hit plus under the vertex groups and then we're gonna hit assign here to assign these vertices to this group and uh, what that allows us to do is add in a new displacement modifier and we can actually reuse this texture right here so just hit this drop down and select that. Now you can see it's displacing all of it and we just wanted to displace the bottom. In this uh, displacement modifier we have the possibility to use a vertex group and this is our group right here and we can also invert this if we need that for some reason and now you can see it's only displacing the bottom parts here but um, we just wanted to displace along the uh, x and the y axis so we're gonna choose x here. Now you can see it's just displacing it along the x axis. Let's uh, duplicate this and then select the Y axis. You can actually apply this and then change the scale of the texture here. Decrease the strength a little bit like so and apply that. Alright so let's add in a remesh modifier again and set it to a low value to get lots of geometry. Then let's go in with another displace modifier. Let's reuse the one that we had here. So now we're displacing all of it, not just uh, the bottom here. If we do something like that and then add in a second displace modifier but without any uh, texture, 
So we'll just displace everything along its normals and set that to a low value. We get these pretty cool cloud shapes. You can see the difference here. That's without and that's with the second displace modifier. Looks pretty good. Let's apply these. Let's add some large scale displacement to this. Yeah, I think that's looking pretty good, but I want to go ahead and do the bottom displacement thing one more time before I move on with the simulation. Let's stick with that. And before we remesh it one last time to add some more small scale detail, what we want to do is separate this large mesh that we got going on here into smaller parts. So when we do the smoke simulation, we can simulate these different parts separately. And that will allow us to get more detail without having to simulate all at once. And the way we're going to separate these parts is by going into edit mode using L on our keyboard to select linked and then hit P and separate by selection. Since uh, these are kind of connected, we're going to have to separate them by hand. So let's grab a chunk that's maybe this size. Separate by selection. That's about a good size for us to work with. It's good to keep everything organized a little bit. And uh, now that we've uh, separated them, the origins are kind of messed up a little bit. So you can see like this, it's rotating around a weird point. The easiest way to fix that is just by selecting all of these, then hitting object, set origin, origin to center of mass surface. You can use volume as well, but I, I just go with surface. Now the origin makes a lot more sense. Okay, let's hide everything except for this one and start working on some final touches here before the simulation. So now we want to add in some more small scale detail. Since we separated it like this, I kind of messed up the geometry a little bit, but I think we're going to be able to fix that by adding in a solidify modifier. Like so. Now let's add some small scale detail to this. Let's add in a displace modifier. Use the good old cloud texture, add some more depth to it. And then we're going to have a final displacement modifier set to a really low value to get these round shapes like so. Feel free to just play around with these values here until you find something that works for what you're trying to do. I'm going to bring these other clouds back in and I'm going to go ahead and copy the modifiers from this one to all of these. And that will take a little bit because we're doing lots of remeshing and, and stuff, but just let it uh, run and it's going to be fine. Make sure you get all of these selected and then shift select the one with the finished modifier stack and then hit control L and hit copy modifiers. Once it's done you can see we got the same amount of details from this one applied to all of these. Select all of them then hit Control A visual geometry to mesh. And that will basically apply all of the modifiers for this one so we just got everything locked into the uh, mesh. Okay now we got the cloud shapes and they're looking pretty good. Now all we have to do is work on the smoke simulation. Alright, let's keep those there and add in a cube. This will be our smoke domain. And let's size it up to kind of fit one of these clouds in it. Now that we've uh, fixed the origins, we can just select it and then hit Shift S and do selection to cursor. That will jump this object to the center of our scene. Rescale this one a little bit. Alright, so let's make this one a smoke domain. So what we want to do is go to the physics tab and hit fluid and then select domain. That will make it uh, see-through as well. Let's uh, start with a resolution of 256. Nothing will happen yet because this one isn't emitting smoke. We're gonna have to select fluid. Let's keep it as geometry. You could also experiment with inflow, but I found that uh, geometry works pretty good. Right away we can just fix some things here. Under the flow source drop down, we want to set the volume emission to 1, so it emits smoke inside of the object as well. And that might give some weird artifacts where there's like a streak here, but in my opinion that didn't really hurt the final product. I think it kind of made it better so I, I'm not gonna worry about that. Let's hide this object for now and it's still gonna emit smoke even though it's hidden and here it might be useful if we can actually see how our cloud will look when it's rendered so change the render engine from EV to cycles and if you have a GPU you want to select that then we're gonna give this cube which we can actually rename smoke domain we want to give that a material and then we can go to the shading tab make sure we're in rendered view remove this principled BSDF and add in a principled volume connect that volume output 
to volume, set the color to white, and let's increase the density a little bit. Here we could just add in a sun lamp to get the lighting, but what I like to do is add in an HDRI. This is basically an image that will light your scene. Uh, very realistically. So we basically just download one of those uh, HDRIs, then go to World, add in an environment texture, connect that to the color here, and then we just open it here, just like that. But I don't want to be able to actually see the background here, I just wanted to light the object. So what we can do to fix that is add in a light path, put that in here, mix shader, plug that here, duplicate the background, so now we can switch between HDRI and just this plain grey background. And we can use this light path node to have the HDRI light up the object but not be visible. We're gonna use the is camera ray, plug that there, and yeah, there we go. Let's also do some changes under the uh, render settings. We can increase the volume paths here to something like 8, should be enough. If we go back to layout here and go to rendered, we can actually see what we're working on. This looks fine but it's very low resolution so you can even see the kind of blocky texture here with the voxels and the way to fix that and add some more detail is to just bump up the resolution here. So I'm gonna go with something like uh, double that see what it turns out to be. So if you didn't know you can use like uh, uh, math stuff in the <laughs> in the value boxes here and uh, look at that that looks pretty good okay so this is a little bit closer to what we want but now this volume here is just directly representing the original object here as you can see and we want it to actually move a little bit like smoke and expand and get displaced like uh, smoke so you get those nice organic looking motions in the cloud like this to do that we're gonna use some forces and have it simulate a couple of frames just like 10 frames or something and and that will allow it to change in a very natural way. So first of all, we might want to use a turbulence force field to add some random turbulence to the cloud. Let's try a strength of 25 and a size of 1. In order to be able to bake this and see what it does, we want to go to the smog domain object. And in the physics properties, we want to change the cache, which is basically the bake. Uh, we want to set it to only cache like 10 frames or something. And let's actually bring the resolution back down to something more manageable so we can see what it's doing but not uh, spend that much time uh, baking it for every little change we do. Set it to modular and hit is resumable. So we can pause it and resume the bake. And now if we just set the frames here to only go to 10, we can actually hit bake data and we get this little progress bar here and it will go frame by frame and simulate the smoke. Now because we have quite a low resolution here, it uh, simulates pretty fast. But then when we're happy with all our little changes, we increase the resolution to like four times this and hit bake and that will give us our final product. But for now, let's see what this turbulence uh, does to the smoke. All right, so now that it has simulated 100%. We can view this in rendered mode and hit play and we'll see some... Whoa, that goes pretty quick. We can go to the 10th frame. Here we can see what the turbulence does. Basically it makes these displacements here in the smoke. That looks a little bit too strong, I think. So let's set it to 10 instead of 25. And I think we can cut the size in half. Another thing we can try is to add some initial velocity to the smoke. And uh, you do that in the actual object that emits the smoke. So just go ahead and enable initial velocity here under this drop down. Here we can add some initial velocity to the smoke in different ways. So we can do by axis here. So we might actually want to add some Z velocity. Let's do like uh, 5 I think. And we can also do some normal velocity. That will basically make the smoke go outwards from the object. Free this data in the smoke domain. Increase this a little bit. It wasn't all that slow. Then we hit bake data and we just wait for this. Okay, so now it's done simulating and we can hide this and see what it looks like. Yeah, so it's a little bit difficult to see the details here, so I'm actually gonna increase the density here just for now, so we can see it a little better. On frame 10 it's way too distorted. We could uh, decrease the strength of the distortion, or we could just set it to end at frame 5 or something. That will actually save us some time. And I think for the final simulation I want to keep the size of the turbulence at 1 and I want to add in some voricity and to do that we have to free this data. 
I don't know how to pronounce that, but yeah, this one, this thing, vor vorticity, vor vorticity. We can put this to something like 0.5, and that will basically make it a little bit more noisy, I guess. Um, so it should add some uh, small scale details. Let's have the simulation end at frame 5, make this high resolution. Just like that. Okay, so this is gonna take like uh, at least 10 minutes to simulate. But I'm uh, confident enough with these settings we made here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit big data. All right, so that took about 15 minutes, I would say. And then now if we go to frame five, this is what we have. You can see that glitch I was talking about with the streaks. Honestly, I don't mind it too much. If you uh, really don't want that, uh, I think the way to fix it is by disabling the volume emission. Now I'm going to show you how to actually save this cloud as a VDB and uh, then we're just going to repeat this process for the rest of these shapes over here. Right, so when we bake it, every single frame is saved as a VDB file and the place to find those files is under the cache drop down here and you see we have a file path right here. So you can just copy this or you can just go to your project folder right here and it will be in the cache fluid folder right here. So here we have a couple of different frames. This will be the first frame and this will be the last frame. So I'm just gonna hit control C on this one and create a new folder and I'm gonna call that cloud VDBs and I'm gonna paste that right here. Just to keep everything organized I'm gonna name this one cloud one. Now we can go ahead and free this bake and this uh, VDB will still be saved in our folder that we created. Just hit free data and to do these ones I'm just gonna put this one here grab our next one shift s and hit selection to cursor then we're gonna fit the domain to the shape of the cloud and you can use your numpad here to switch from side to side make sure everything looks good this one doesn't have any fluid settings so we're just gonna select this one then shift select this one with all the settings and hit ctrl l copy modifiers and this should bring everything over to this one and then just hit big data again and repeat it for all of your uh, cloud shapes all right guys so now we're back another day and i've made these different cloud vdbs but now i'm going to show you how to actually open these in a new blender project and then i'm going to show you some basic shading and some uh, rendering techniques to make it render a little bit faster okay so now we have a fresh blender scene i just deleted everything and in order to bring the clouds into the scene we're just going to hit shift a then go to volume and then import open VDB. Then just locate your VDB files and select uh, one of them. One thing you'll notice is that the origin will be a little bit messed up and you can't actually change the origin in a VDB file. So if you need a substitute for that, you can just go ahead and add in an uh, empty, then parent this volume to that empty. Now instead of moving this, you can just move the empty. But I just uh, keep it like this. All right, so first of all, let's go ahead and choose cycles for this. And if we go to rendered view, just have this black cloud here. Let's add an HDRI in order to light this volume. You just go to the shading tab, then switch from object to world, then add in an environment texture and just plug that right here. Then just open your HDRI that you downloaded before. Then switch back to object shading and add a new shader. Let's uh, increase the density here a little bit so we can see the detail and change the color to be white. Under light paths, we're going to increase the volume scatter to somewhere around 4 and 8. You can go higher than this, but that will increase your render times quite a bit. So I usually just keep it at 8. Now you can see it's looking a lot brighter. And to fix the performance a little bit so it's actually workable, we want to go to the volumes drop down and then set the max steps to somewhere between 8 and 32. And this will basically clamp the amount of light paths we have inside of the volume. And then we can increase the step rate to 10. Now you can see it's rendering quite fast here. If you increase this step rate too much, you'll notice some details missing. For example here, if we go 10, it looks like this, and back to 1. You can see it has a little bit more details, so it might be good to keep this a little lower. I guess. So you can just play around that value, find a balance between the look and performance. That's looking pretty decent, but what I like to do is work on the shading a little bit more in order to get a more realistic result. We're gonna add in a volume scatter, plug that into the volume here. Right now you can't see anything, so we're gonna have to add in an attribute node, and under the data tab here we can see which attributes we can work with. So right now we're gonna use the density, and just plug that factor into the density. Now we should be able to see our clouds again. Then we're gonna use the light path node in order to calculate the anisotrophy. Anisotrophy? 
depending on the density of the cloud. So we're just gonna have to do a little bit math here. I didn't figure this out myself. I used this video from Samuel Krog. It works great, so I'm just gonna copy this and show you uh, what it's gonna look like when it's finished. I can link the original video down below as well if you want a more in-depth tutorial for this. So this is the shader from the video. If you need a different result you can play around with these values here. So for example this will be sort of the density and these two values here will control the anisotropy. And this will also work better if you increase the volume paths. Just keep in mind that that will uh, tank your performance a little bit. Okay, so this is pretty much what we're uh, left with. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I'm going to upload these clouds to Patreon with some other clouds I've made. And if you get stuck anywhere, just comment a question below this video. And I'll try to answer as many of you as possible. Yeah, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.